Welcome to Ion Science. I'm your host, Dave Chacho. Our top story tonight, advanced alien megastructure found orbiting a star in our galaxy, or a cloud of comets lazily spins around an unremarkable star. That story again, the greatest discovery in human history, or meh. Who's a good boy? Using data collected by the Kepler Space Telescope, amateur astronomers discovered an unusually shaped object orbiting a star in our galaxy. Now, we're not saying it's definitely an alien space station a thousand times more terrifying than the Death Star, but it might be. The star in question can be seen with an amateur telescope and is 1,500 light years from Earth, which means that if the inhabitants of the structure we're looking at are looking back at us, they're actually seeing Earth from 3,000 years ago. On the other hand, if aliens from the system are still around in 1,500 years, they might be looking back and watching us right now. In which case, thanks for watching Ion Science. Don't forget to fill out those Nielsen forms. Core blast. If you're interested in learning more about this or story, Google alien megastructure, or look up the name of the star, KIC 8462852. What? What? Is up with these names, Dave? Oh, hey, Neil. Ladies and gentlemen, Ion Science correspondent Neil Dadati. Neil, celestial bodies are named by the International Astronomical Union. Yeah, well, I think the IAU can do better. Now, I'm not saying this is the first ever recorded proof of alien intelligence or anything, but it might be. So let's put a little extra effort into this one, yeah? So I've come up with a list of suggestions, all right? The awesome star. The holy shit star. Holy shit. Ursa Majorer. Ziggy Stardust, the star. Steve! Steve. Beetlejuice 2, Beetlejuicier. It's showtime. Deep Space 10. Backdoor Sluts 9, the star. I like that. Great, thanks for the suggestions, Neil. I'm sure the IAU has a lot to think about. Yeah, just decide which one you'd like and uh, let me know. I can get the poster printed. Okay, cool. I know a guy at Kinko's. All right, thanks, Neil. Yeah, he's got an employee discount, so it'll be cheaper for you. Cool, cool, thanks. He was my neighbor in the yeah. 80s. And so. All right. Thanks, Neil. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Let's go to field correspondent Peggy Sinnott, who's coming to us live on location from Antarctica. Yes! Hi, Dave! I guess when I agreed to do this correspondent piece, I didn't realize you were actually going to send me to Antarctica. I know, cool, right? Yeah, it's just that the helicopter that brought me here left, and I uh -huh. have no supplies. Uh, so what's the story down there? Okay, I'm here at Lake Vostok, where Russian researchers have discovered over 3,500 forms of life under a half mile of solid ice in the lake directly below me. So, you think the helicopter's coming back pretty soon? So you're saying that hundreds of microbes have evolved completely isolated from any other life on Earth? That's right. Lake Vostok appears to be teeming with organisms, even though it has been untouched by the outside world for tens of thousands of years. Wow, a powerful demonstration of the resilience of life in extreme conditions. Speaking of which, what's the ETA on that helicopter? Now, I also understand that the Russians are the first to ever successfully drill from where you are down to the liquid water below, is that right? Yeah, yeah, apparently somewhere around here is a big hole leading all the way down to Lake Vostok. Now, can we please get out of here? Hold on just a sec. Um, okay, I'm being told, yeah, they're telling me that there's a storm rolling in, so actually, I guess the helicopters can't take off right now, but uh, they said to just hang tight and they'll be there within the week. Week? But I don't, we don't have any food to camera guy's dead, Dave! I haven't eaten in two hours. I'm hypoglycemic. I have to eat. I'm eating Gary, Dave. Ah! Okay, I found the hole. I have fallen into the drill hole, Dave. What does it look like in there, Peggy? It's a hole, Dave. Oh, no. I'm slipping. I'm Ah! 
Thanks, Peggy, for that exclusive report from inside a Russian ice hole. And now, I on other news. Scientists at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory have created a tiny invisibility cloak made from gold nano antennas that can hide two human skin cells. It's not Deathly Hallows quality yet, but it is the first invisibility device to drape like a cloth around a hidden object instead of having a rigid shape like a pyramid. If you want to see what it looks like, we have one on loan here somewhere from Lawrence Berkeley. Where is it? Where'd it go? Oh my god. I've lost the invisibility cloak. Lawrence Berkeley's gonna break my legs! Okay, calm down. I'll just lie. Here it is, I'll say. Before they notice it's not there, I'll be long gone, deep in the Serengeti, and everyone who's seen this show will have died from a mysterious accident. Oh, wait. Never mind, here it is. Cool, huh? A new video reveals that some octopi have actually learned how to make their own quicksand. Wait a minute. A quicksand pit full of octopi. So that nightmare from my youth was real. Perhaps the other dark dreams will come alive too. Next we can expect moats full of talking dinosaurs, pungi pits filled with electric panthers, and the terrifying tuna who lives inside a bearded clam. Actually, that last one might not have been a nightmare per se. Fraunhofer Labs in Germany has debuted a healthy vegan ice cream made from flour proteins instead of milk. The official name for it is Lupinessa, but a lot of people have taken to calling it God damn it, who let the vegan bring dessert? Finally, the Canadian Center for Addiction and Mental Health, or CAMHA, has found that teens who suffer a traumatic brain injury are seven times more likely to have drunk an energy drink within the past year. Here we go. What? Oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Ion Science correspondent Robert Chan. How you doing, Robert? Uh, pissed. Why is that? Because correlation is not causation, Dave. Every few weeks, somebody publishes a report finding a link between two things, like ice cream sales and drowning deaths, which both tend to increase during the summer, but not because one causes the other, it's just hot out. Correlation, not causation. Energy drinks and traumatic brain injuries are both associated with meathead douchebag idiots. It makes a great headline, but there's no evidence for a causal link. For instance, I'm confident that I can drink an entire energy drink without causing a brain injury. Oh, you don't have to do that. Oh God, that's terrible. No, no, I'm gonna finish this. No, you don't have to drink anymore. I said it's for science, Dave. Oh God. Oh, it just keeps aftertasting. <laughs> the only thing that makes it stop is the pain. So there is no causal link between drinking an energy drink and brain damage. Ooh. Robert Chan, everybody. <clears throat> On a more serious note, R.I.P. Gary the Camera Guy. Your camera guying was second to none, right up until your tragic death moments ago. Well, that's it for us at Ion Science. I'm your host, Dave Chacho, reminding you to look out for science.